<laughs> Alright, now we are on the way. Yeah, I'm nervous. Uh, you know, it's a lot can a lot can go wrong. It's always a little nerve-wracking. You know, I try not to think about it, but in the back of my head I know that there's this pressure, you know, and this hope. Joe Grant has been helping people get into their Bitcoin wallets, and he joins us now. <laughs> Joe, thanks so much for being with us. How hard is it to get into a Bitcoin wallet? How do you do it? Really, anything is hackable if you put in uh, a, enough time and enough resources. Part of hacking is you never really know what's going to happen, even if you've done it multiple times. It always feels like magic. There's always a risk of something going wrong, especially with the type of attack I was doing. Yeah, you know, I never expected the response uh, from a video like that before. I've gotten hundreds of emails from people that need help. I'm driving up to Seattle to see someone named LeVar, and he has locked himself out of a phone that could potentially have a lot of money, like multi-millions of dollars. Yeah, good seeing you, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> um, how's everything? Everything's beautiful. Everything is really good. This project has a bunch of different steps uh, that we have to do, and everything has to go right, even before we get to the point of seeing if there's cryptocurrency in the wallet. My question is, the data that's being extracted, is that just the swipe pattern? Yes, so the goal is just to get the swipe pattern, which okay. should give you access to the wallet. In this case, I need to extract memory from the phone. This is the device that we want to get the contents off of. That plug plugs into the connector on the phone. Try to find where his swipe password is stored. We are successfully reading the entire memory device. See if we can then figure out what the swipe password is. Gesture.key is the actual swipe password. And then get access to the wallet and then see if there's money on it. And we have to unlock the phone and then we have to see how much is on it. So it's going to be like this kind of intense thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm going to faint. <laughs> and if any of those steps goes wrong, uh, you know, we're going to potentially leave empty handed. I appreciate you guys. And I, I cannot wait for this. You know, this is going to be life changing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah don't, don't commend us yet. Let's wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Right, right, right. <laughs> I got you, but I, I got faith in you, my man. So okay, I am in Seattle, and I uh, got to get to the hotel, set up my lab. Lavar's coming over, and we're gonna try to hack this phone. We're finally here. Let's check out the room. I don't know, um, I need a place to set up my stuff. So maybe we do, we'll have to set up all my equipment over here, because this is the biggest table. So I'm gonna be hacking in the bedroom. Nice ambiance. Lavar is gonna be here in ten minutes. I better get ready. Now I'm ready. Hey, hey, I'm how are you? Doing good, good yourself? Good meeting you. Same, same. Welcome to my uh, mobile lab. <laughs> That's right. How's it been? It's been good. It's yeah. been good. Yeah. Been good. How about yourself? Good. Can't it's, believe we're doing it here. This is insane. But <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then I ride. I drive like all the worst routes. People say. You know? Really? Yeah, yeah. They're oh. like, man, you're a glutton for punishment. And it's like, man, I, I'm a people person. Though. Yeah. That's, That's probably why they put you on those. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, about the Bitcoin at the time we were super 
first day, she met a guy at uh, a coffee shop, it was Starbucks actually, and purchased the Bitcoin from him. Had no idea of what I was doing. Didn't even know if this guy was legit. So I got all this money, I'm giving him the money. So I'm like, well, how do I know I have this Bitcoin? So he goes, well, as long as we get three completions, then you're good. And so I'm like, okay, I have no idea of what you mean, but okay, I got the completions through my wallet and transaction was completed. All of this, it just makes me more comfortable to know I have like everything right, right, that right. I might need. It's like having the, the basketball shoes with the gym shorts, the basketball, that's, yeah. That's right. Got a divorce, you know, went through a divorce and everything. So when I moved, I put the phone in a box and I knew I put the phone in safekeeping. I just couldn't remember seven years goes by and then the whole Bitcoin craze hits. I'm hopeful because yes, I've yes. tested it a bunch of times. As long as your phone matches what I've been testing, okay. and that's what we don't know too, right? It's right, like another right. unknown Man, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, guys well, know. I appreciate you even finding us. Yeah, and that was John. He was <laughs> supposed to be here. Hopefully That's he right. gets here. I had one of my friends, she took me to get the Bitcoin. As a matter of fact, she calls me out of the blue. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, you're a millionaire. You're a millionaire. Man, I don't know where this phone is. One day, I was going to look for my server. And I go on this computer box that I have. And man, lo and behold, boom, there's the phone right there. Right, John, you want to get him? Welcome to my lair. <laughs> How are you? You too. Yeah. <laughs> so I grab the phone, charge it up. When I power it on, I, I start swiping, trying to remember the swipe password. I had encrypted this phone, so that way, if someone ever got it, they wouldn't be able to get into it. If they tried too many times, it would just erase all the data. So by the fourth time of trying, I think I had like six or seven tries left because you get ten. I said, okay, I'm done. I don't want to try anymore. I don't want to lose the phone, so then for about another year, I just been on a hunt trying to find somebody. I said, man, somebody's gonna be able to get into this phone. Somebody has to be able to get into this phone. Um, but yeah, I was about to explain to LeVar the whole process and then just start doing it. All right. Yeah, make yeah. yourself at home. You do mm -hmm. art, like artwork. And I do a little bit of everything, from clothing, design, to everything I'm wearing from hoodie, oh, right. pants, socks. A couple of years ago, actually, he told me that he had a phone, but we really didn't like put too much into it. Around November, he actually gave me a call and he was just telling me like, yo, like, I want to figure out how to get this Bitcoin. Like I was checking the price. So I was like, well, you know, he's 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 an out of the box thinker. He's looking and he's like, here, try this, try this. I posted on Reddit. You know, I looked at different forums. And then for one time, the one time in my life where the YouTube algorithm actually did something for my life was that time. And then that's when Joe's video popped up. He sends me this video. And he's like, man, I think this dude can get it to the phone. You need to hit him up. And I was like, man, who's this crazy guy with the long hair? You know what I'm saying? Talking about he's hacking a Bitcoin wallet. So yeah, when I seen that, I was like, this is the guy. I'm a really good judge of character, so I could just tell that this this guy knew what he was doing. There's people who have services online, and they're like, send me the phone. And, you know, that's not going to happen. Like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I felt more comfortable with them guys coming up here. You know, when we talked to Joe, he kind of, like, made it seem like, you know, like, we're going to do this the right way. We got our paperwork in order. So this potentially, like... I, I, I'm telling Joe, telling everybody, this this potentially could be millions of dollars on here because I bought the Bitcoin back in end of 2013. I spent about a few thousand, I want to say. It was just, you know, so volatile. You just don't know what the price was. So since my daughter was born um, and she's turning eight, that's how long I've had this phone. What'd she think about it? She's like, ah, well, she doesn't really know, so. <laughs> Until I tell her, baby, we're a millionaire, spin the globe, we can go anywhere in the world you want to, she's not gonna really understand. <laughs> the reason that I wanted to help LeVar so bad with the, you know, the project, because ever since I've known him, he's been a hard worker. And even if he has to learn something on himself, like, you know, studying to get his real estate license, studying you know different things in small business i've always seen him trying to better his life for himself and his kids so when he said you know i need help with something you know it was easy for me to help anytime i've ever asked him for help in the in the past um he was definitely there to help me so i think if anybody deserves to you know randomly have the algorithm send them to joe i think it's good that that happened um to lavar <sighs> okay <clears throat> so the overall concept of what we're doing is Opening up your phone, there is one memory device on the board. The operating system, all of your data, everything that is like personal storage right. is in that device. The goal of the attack is to copy that entire memory 
onto my computer, analyze that memory, see if I can figure out where your swipe password is stored. You can find that, decode what that password is, put the phone back together, log in and see your wallet. Right, right. My first plan of attack for hacking this phone was to take advantage of something called a JTAG interface. Basically it's like a, a debug interface designed for engineers or manufacturers to work with the CPU that's on the board and through the JTAG interface, we can actually access external memory on the phone. There's a little connector on the board that's on. Um, basically all you do is pop the cover off and unscrew it right. and it's right there. So through that JTAG interface, from here, I can connect to the CPU, which then connects to the memory, so I can read the memory through that interface. Okay. The problem is it's really slow. It could take anywhere, if we use that method, from eight hours to 20 hours. But I had heard that some versions of the Samsung phone that we were hacking don't have that connector soldered on the board. I have this adapter that plugs directly onto the connector oh, on your phone. Oh. So if we open up your phone and there's no connector there, okay. Then we go, oh no. For every step in the process, I've thought of like a couple other ways to do it, just in case something goes wrong. Right. Because you never know. There are some risks with it. Um, one of them being it is susceptible to noise mm -hmm. and interference. You know, as we're copying the data off, something might copy incorrectly. It shouldn't matter for us because we're really just looking for one little section of this giant file system. All right, so you ready for the phone? Yeah, let's do it. This is the moment of truth. The baby. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh. This is the phone. That is the phone. Has potentially millions, millions. of dollars, right? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go hack it. <laughs> so first thing I'm actually gonna do is power it on. Do we know does the battery uh, battery charge or might be charged? Okay. Might not okay, I'm gonna power it on just to make sure it actually works. Here, let's, pl let's plug it in with the charger. Okay, red light comes on, so it detects it. Nothing. My time being on this earth, I know that things can go wrong a lot of the time, so when the phone didn't turn on, it's like, no, not a, not a barrier like right here. No, the red light came on. <clears throat> it might be so dead that it's I, not that's, that's what okay it let's use my let's use my battery then so i'm gonna <clears throat> pop the back cover off <laughs> it looks like my test phone so that's good i'm gonna take out your battery put this in come on uh, why is it not turning on Oh, here we go. Oh, well, I was going to say, it's a slow phone, huh? I knew it would come on. We were all a little sketched out, but it came on. The swipe password screen that came up on his phone is exactly what I was seeing on my test phones. Hopefully, the same version of Android operating system on his phone that I was using on mine. I have to unscrew one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. We should be able to see if the connector is there or if it's just the footprint that we have to uh -huh. solder a connector onto. Screw is done. All right, this is ready to open. So now I can take off the frame, this section that covers all of the circuitry. When I take that off, we'll be able to see that connector or no connector. Yeah, yeah there, that's there, right. There, 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 there. Let's make this easy. Okay, are we ready to take the cover off? Yes. Let's go. Please be there. All right, ready? Just there. Oh, thank God. Yes. I was looking in the wrong spot. I was like, oh. it's not there. <laughs> it's there. It's right. there. Okay, okay, okay. So now I can take all of my hardware, plug it in. Let's go. Start copying that memory. Let's right. get this money. <laughs> all right. All I had to do is plug in my pre-existing cable that I had plug that into my JTAG debugging hardware. This is called the Octo Plus Pro. It's basically like an engineering or, or you know, mobile phone repair tool that has software on here that knows how to send the right data to the phone. Plug that into my computer. Okay, so this is set up. So I'm gonna plug this in. Run the tools and we'd be fine. But that wasn't quite the case. The JTAG access is only granted in like the first 
quarter second or half second oh, when you power up the phone. We basically oh, need to like power it up, catch it, and then send a command to halt the CPU to stop right, doing right. stuff. So then we have complete control of it. So yeah, so I can run the software on here. All right, that's on. Now what's up with the, what's up with that? Pretty much right away, things just weren't working. It's blinking, it's like not, I think my USB port doesn't have enough power to power it on its own. So let's. Ah, almost got it. I was just getting these weird error messages in my software tool. Did it halt it? Really right away, what I thought was gonna be an easy task turned into this kind of snowball effect of trying to get everything working. Come on, you can do it. Once I started seeing these errors with the cable, I started fussing around with some of my other devices and trying a hardwired version that I had that bypassed the plug-in cable. My hardwired version connects. So this is what we should be seeing. So we know that the interface works, the software works. So I came to the conclusion that there was some connectivity issue with my cable, which had worked fine two days ago, like a couple days ago. And I was like, I can just use this cable. So I didn't even have time to buy a second one. Like normally I would buy two of things. Put on my magnifying glasses, started looking at the tiny little connectors on that interface, resoldered everything, touched it all up, make sure there was no shorts. I just couldn't figure out what was wrong with the cable. And uh, yeah, so we had to switch gears and go for a little more of a hardware hacking effort. So for some reason, I think my JTAG interface cable has shit the bed. So we had to have a talk and I laid out all the options, but I really wanted LeVar to be part of this process. There's a couple ways that we can go. That was the first option of four. This device that he was gonna just plug into the JTAG that didn't work, of course, uh, Murphy's Law, so Joe had numerous options. The other option is using JTAG with hardwired connections. Soldering to that is tricky. There's nine connections I need to do. Both the third and fourth options are with the memory. Simple and slow method using JTAG. There was a faster and slightly more risky method of physically connecting to the memory itself to extract the memory, and then there were variations of those. Uh, John, what you think? I'm slow and steady. Yeah, yeah slow and steady, though. Know. But that's all you. But for me, slow and steady wins the race. So you know, as long as we got the time, I don't see a reason why we shouldn't try all the other options. I mean, the other thing we could do too is go the slower route, try to hardwire to the connector, give that a try. If it works, it's going to come up right away. The connection will, and then we just wait for it to dump. From my perspective, that is by far the most difficult of all of the four possibilities of attacking this phone. Nobody wants to do micro soldering in a hotel room.
everybody had claimed a role within the room. <laughs> Light holder, <laughs> courager, like whatever you were, uh, to make sure that Joe got it done. Oh, yeah, okay, so where's it in there? Okay. I think that's it. Doesn't look very pretty. But uh, I think they're all there, and I don't think they're touching. I'm gonna move this out of the way. It's a bit without having to lift too much. Come on, <laughs> something has to go right. Okay, so something must not be connected. If it doesn't see that, it could be that ground isn't connected or something else isn't connected. So I'm just sitting there like, no. He, uh, so you know, started to go through, do his redundancy checks, check them one by one. It's the same behavior as the cable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. And then I really started worrying. What is going on? Like a piece of metal there that's conductive, so if those are touching down on that, then that could be causing the problem. Let's get this going. A phone actually has a certain process that you have to go through where JTAG is really only enabled for like the first half a second when the phone boots up and then it gets disabled. So if you don't hit the spot at just the right time to essentially open the door, then that door gets locked. Are you ready? Ready. Again. I kind of messed around with the process a little bit of powering it with my power supply, with my USB cable, with my battery, and just one of the times after getting error, error, error. It just, I was just clicking it over and over again because it was like failed, failed, failed. And now it says connect successful and it is actually oh, showing geez. us the whole the 14 gigs. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Oh, well, we get in there, Charlie. We get in there, Charlie. I knew it. I knew it. But we should start. Um, so I'm going to do a full flash read. So it's reading right now. Yeah. So now we don't touch anything. Yes. And this is this is like what could potentially take eight hours, Ten 20 years. hours. But I'm so wired right now. Like, I'm tired. <laughs> but... If I see the password and I. I I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be a little upset because I know it's something easy, but I just can't remember what it was. But you know, it is what it is. But we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be up till five o'clock anyway. Yeah. That's just me. That's crazy. Yeah. Sitting in bed right next to all of the hardware, I'm actually paranoid enough that I don't want to turn off any lights to cause any sort of like electromagnetic spike. Data is about 2% complete. I'm gonna see if I can actually get some sleep, but I'm gonna keep one eye open and make sure that this file transfer works and that we get all of the data off of his phone because if we do, we can go to the next phase, get his swipe password, and get to that cryptocurrency. Good night, see you tomorrow. It's the next morning already. That seemed to go by really quick. So the data has already been copying for just over eight hours. It could take up to 20 hours, depending on how much data is on that phone. The problem is the hotel needs this room. So it's nine o'clock in the morning right now, and we have to be out by two, which seems like a lot of time. Seems like it should totally work, but sometimes it goes slow. Sometimes it goes fast. Hopefully things will go our way. My fingers continue to be crossed. I can actually tell when the uh, data is being transferred slow or fast on the Octo Plus box, when the light is blinking kind of slowly, it's the slow data transfer, and when it's like fully on, it's blasting. I keep looking over because I'm hoping for it to be a solid light, but man, it's stressful. Welcome back. Good morning. <laughs> Let's right. check it out. Yes. Just jumped up and came straight here. Same clothes, so <laughs> yeah. I apologize. That's the, that's the hacker way. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> 55%. Another eight to 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get comfortable. Now we wait? Yes. Ooh. So 
this thing is cranking along, it's at 75%, and it looks like at this speed, we're getting like 5% every 20 minutes. Okay. We have like an hour and 40 hour. minutes. We basically are getting kicked out of this room in an hour and 10 minutes. Right, yeah, right. So it's only gonna be like another 20 or 30 minutes past that. Do you think if I bribed them? <laughs> <laughs> like, could I, you, you think I could give them cash? Because it seems to work on TV. Right? Little, little grease never hurt. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Here's 100 bucks. Right. Right. Yeah, if we, can, if we can get till three. I think they're out there too. That's gonna be Shows. out there right now. Yeah, sure. yeah. Oh, hello? Hello? Hi. Oh, um, so I talked to the front desk and they said that we could stay until two, but I'm wondering if there's any way, I'm running an experiment in here with my computer. Everything else is clean. I moved everything out. Um, but is there any way I can stay until two? To, you can see how clean it is, but okay. um, can, I, can I give this to you? Um, uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 95%. 245 so we're gonna hit there. exactly at 3 o'clock <laughs> once this hits 100 and it's done we got to get out of here and go to the other room close the software disconnect this and then I'll carefully just carry this over as is as long as the data is there I don't care what happens to anything else. Right, right. 550 megs 96% it's amazing going from seeing you on YouTube crack us up to be sitting in right person here in the room with you person. Bro, I exist insane, like, <laughs> So caffeinated and excited that I'm shaking. Two fifty-seven hundred megs to go out of sixteen gigs. The hard part is done now. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. We're about to be rich. Oh, uh, you're an optimist, aren't you? Oh, man, I know, bro. The final ten. Come on. Eight, let's go. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Yes. 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 It's done. Yes. I'm going to disconnect from the box, close the program. We did May 7th, right? There it is. I'm just gonna run a program on it that will look for printable text oh, within the file. Yeah. Oh my See, God. there's like words and stuff, so yes. all the data is there. It actually did it. Oh. Yes. Okay, let's pack up and go oh. next door. Okay, got that. Comes the stuff. Lavar, how are you feeling? I feel good. You nervous? No, not at all. No. The nervous part is over with now. I just want to see what it is. Yeah. I get excited after. <laughs> right, right. Ooh. Yeah. I'm good. I'm ready. Let's do it. Are we going to do this? Oh. Um, yes, sir. Let's go. Let's look at this file. So this is a... 16 gig giant binary file of that entire memory. What I can do is mount that binary and it actually, the operating system will read that file that we can actually like browse through all of the content on your phone. Now I will show the partition table. So this is gonna let us know if we have the entire memory file and we're looking for the user partition, which is where all the user data is. So this should show our partitions. Nice. All right, so we see them all. User data, that's the biggest yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm using a different tool to map each partition to its own like disk, okay. and then I can mount it. Oop, zero P15, and then we're gonna mount it to our own drive name. So I'm gonna mount it, mount the user partition onto our disk. Okay, no error. There's a bunch yes. of files, that's good. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff, what we want is in system. Okay. If it's there, gesture.key. Oh, I was oh, looking at. Oh, oh. I was looking for I was swipe. Looking for, I'm yeah, like, yeah, where's swipe? Password. So gesture.key yeah. is a file yeah, cool. that is not the direct pattern, but it's called a, a cryptographic hash. Okay. So in theory, if you have the 20 byte thing, the SHA hash, you're not supposed to convert it back. Like mathematically, you can't do that. Okay. But. Because Android's open source, you can run through every possible gesture combination and compute what the hash is. So I have a database of every hash pattern and what it 
corresponds to. Okay, so now we can use a binary, because it's a binary image, so we're gonna look at it. So that's the SHA-1 hash of your particular swipe pattern. Oh, so it's crazy. actually there. No <laughs> <laughs> <Joe Kyber. laughs> so, so, so now we have to look it up. So this list, it's massive of every possible okay. swipe pattern. So what we're gonna do is search for those bytes in here. <laughs> six, uh, five, six A, E six, zero, seven. I'm gonna start with just a couple. Three, two, one. Okay, E six, E and ends in F five. Okay, so that's, let's see if there's any others. Nope, so there's only one pattern, two, five, eight, nine. Two, five, eight, nine. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> I guess that's why you forgot it. I'm gonna write it down on here. Two, five, <laughs> eight. It's an L for LeVar. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? Did you ever try that one? No. <laughs> are you freaking Hell serious? Like that's LeVar. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. That's it? An L? Like, that's the easiest thing ever. Like, let's put this back together, power it up, let you log in. I'm gonna have the phone down here. If there's a lot of money, you're not gonna drop the phone and right, break it, right. right? So if you pass out, you'll fall into right, the bed right, or the floor. Right, right, right. All right, let's do it. Let's try it. We'll put this in. Let's see if this thing's gonna actually power up with all these wires. Oh, vibrated. It's loading. Okay. All right, you can have the honors of yeah, unlocking your well. phone. Okay. Okay. So what are we gonna do? You're gonna go right to the app. Bi is it the Bitcoin blockchain mycelium? Look at all those. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God. That is insane. Okay. This is it. This is the money shop. How much is it? What does it say? Point oh oh three. What is that? <laughs> Lavar. Oh no, bro. No way. This is from 2016? Oh, I thought it was 13, 14. $105 that corresponds to. No. Oh, what the hell? What? Last known value for currency, $653. Uh -huh. Back in a while ago. Uh -huh. So that maybe that's like one Bitcoin or something. But your pin is it's encrypted in here. Uh, so that's the only one that we can't, that we haven't gotten into. Well, right now I'm a little devastated. Um, it was a good journey. Um, wish we could have been more successful, but we still have a little bit of hope. Um, we have one more wallet to get into. Joe's gonna try to get into that. And we're gonna stay optimistic. And hopefully everything goes well and the coins are there. <laughs> like, you know, like you said, the journey was amazing. Um, you know, kind of, you know, it's obviously a letdown to not be able to be as successful, but, you know, there's still a little bit of hope. Um, it is all its own little adventure, so, you know, I'm happy, you know, whatever the outcome is. So. Didn't so, make money, but we definitely made new friends. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know how to start it. It is like a gold rush, right? And sometimes you hit it and sometimes you don't. And uh, definitely was a learning experience, if nothing else. And I don't know, I mean, there is one last encrypted wallet on his device, so maybe I can crack that pin to get access to it. But yeah, I mean, that's the nature of this business. You know, we got into this to use our skills to help people 
unlock and get access to their cryptocurrency. And unfortunately, a lot of times the value isn't there. The money is not there. I guess all we can do is go on to the next wallet. Such a bummer of an ending. <laughs> isn't it? It's like poor LeVar. I did a little bit of research, so I think if, if nothing else, we'll kind of have some closure. I, I basically traced your original purchase, definitely July 2016 instead okay. of 2013. And then the investment amount was $400. A lot of it though, unfortunately, went to a place called Bitblender. Problem is that website went down in 2019, I believe. So that major portion is gone. The good news, there is 75 milli Bitcoin, 1800 or $2,000, yeah. which is still better than your investment going in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate you guys, man. This has been a wild ride. I just wish it would have turned that way better. Um, definitely fun, though. I, I, was, I was rich for this this short period of time I that's was right before we before we knew it was in it yeah <laughs> right right i was a millionaire man so, yeah, well it was yeah definitely